So um, what I'm going to be doing today is um, sharing a, a little bit of a sample video, kind of a real tape that I created from a longer video. But before I do that, I want to take a poll. And this poll really asks you to consider yourself as a consumer of videos, because all of us at uh, UCI are having to watch a lot of videos. What do you like when you're watching videos and how much of that can you use in creating your own dynamic videos for your classes? So I'm going to launch this poll and hopefully everybody can see that. And there's a few questions here. So about 29 out of 32 have replied. So I'm going to go ahead and end the polling so that we have time to look at the results. Okay, so end polling and I'm going to share results. Okay, so um, interesting that people prefer the PowerPoint with the very small talking head. That is kind of a default, I think, in both uh, how, how lectures record in PowerPoint and how they record in Zoom. I personally prefer the PowerPoint and the speaker sharing the screen space, and Natalie helped me figure out how to achieve that effect in a fairly efficient way. Um, most of us do prefer having some alternation among formats. That's been very important in my own lecture design. And most of us prefer a more informal presentation with a little bit of personality. <laughs> and if we prefer that, believe me, our students prefer that as well, because they're watching videos all day. Um, so, and a few people don't really care as long as the content is good. And I think that's probably true for some faculty. I think it's probably true for very few of our undergraduates. And so I'm going to just show you a, a four minute uh, sample video that demonstrates some of the principles that I use. I've taken one of my own 20 minute lectures and kind of given you highlights to demonstrate elements of this. So. I'm going to, um, I have this housed on Yuja. Hopefully Yuja will not let me down today. Can people see it? Yes. Okay, and that doorbell was from the video. Hi. I made this little movie today to share some of the things that I like doing when I create lecture videos for my students. They include having a sense of entrance having a sense of beginning and end, often with a callback, incorporating clips in the form of both Shakespeare productions and experts that I can interview on Zoom to increase my knowledge base and build the world of my students. I hope you enjoy it. Is that the lark or the nightingale? That's what the newlyweds argue about the morning after they secretly consummate their marriage in Juliet's bedroom. Yesterday was a big day for our lovers. They had married at noon, and then Romeo killed Tybalt on his way home from the secret wedding. They consummate the marriage anyway, in the full knowledge that Romeo has been exiled on pain of death and will have to leave his new bride. Will thou be gone? It is not yet near day. It was the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. After I show the full clip, I go through the passage image by image until I get to a reference to some obscure musical theory. And at this point, I decide to bring in an expert. And I'm going to demonstrate for you what that sounded like uh, using a recorder, a woodwind instrument that was very popular in Shakespeare's day, probably recognize it. So as you might guess, division works by dividing up musical intervals. So imagine that you're singing or playing a melody which has a big interval between notes, like a fifth. Now, as you repeat that melody, you want to add some variations, change it up, make it more interesting. And Renaissance musicians would do a lot of improvisation of these kinds of variations and melodic decorations, not unlike what jazz musicians do today. So one way to ornament this 
interval with divisions is to divide up the notes so there are smaller intervals. So we go from this to this or Pretty interesting, right? In fact, this scene becomes an actual duet or a song for two voices when the play is adapted into opera, a form of musical theater. Let's hear just a little bit of this operatic duet together. continue to explain the passage and then at the very end I try to have a callback that brings us to the beginning of the lecture. And by the way, the bird song you heard at the beginning, I chose the nightingale and not the lark. See you soon. Okay, so I hope that gave you a sense of how I tried to use some of those principles that we looked at in the poll to create what I hope are engaging videos for our students. I also add Yuja quizzes, which are a really great comprehension tool that keeps students engaged in the videos, but I don't want to demonstrate that today. Um, in terms of preparation, you know, it's really learning these skills and figuring out which of those dimensions are most important to me. Like I got really obsessed with having the face be bigger in the video for more intimacy with the students and with my audience. And so I went through a lot of, of searching through different tools and finally Natalie helped me kind of nail that. Um, so I don't, I'm probably out of time and I wanna make sure we have time for the next person, but thank you for letting me share a little bit of Romeo and Juliet with you today, because <laughs> that's always my, my learning outcome, make them love Shakespeare. <laughs> so th my thanks to DTEI and, and uh, everyone who's helped me learn some of these skills.